Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the science fiction, psychological horror and drama movie titled, Annihilation. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A woman called Lena is asked by a man called Lomax how long she thought she was inside, and she answers it must have been a couple of days. The man tells her she was inside for four months, and asks instead what happened to the rest of the team. She answers she can't remember. Five months earlier, Lena is teaching biology, being a professor in the field. Her husband called Kane apparently went missing in a special forces mission about 12 months ago, and so she is still in deep sorrow. But suddenly one day, he returns home, and she gets extremely shocked, happy and relieved. Being an army veteran herself, she asks him later where he was and what happened to him, but he can't answer any of her questions, sitting quiet and staring like his mind is somewhere else. Seeing he's not feeling well, she calls an ambulance, but instead of going to the hospital, the ambulance is stopped by military forces, and both Lena and Kane are taken away. Not long after, Lena wakes up in a secret facility, being greeted by a psychologist called Dr. Ventress. Lena asks about her husband, but Dr. Ventress won't answer her questions, but instead asks questions back about him, if she knows anything about his mission, which she doesn't. Dr. Ventress suddenly reveals Kane has massive internal bleeding and organ failure. Lena remarks she can help her husband, being a biologist, if she can reveal for her what Kane was exposed of on his mission. Next, Lena is shown a strange force field border, and is told it is probably some kind of extraterrestrial event, which started with a shimmering around a lighthouse. A warden entered to investigate, but never returned. Since then, the border has been expanding across land and water, and they've sent in teams of people to find out what's happening, but no one has returned, except her husband, who is now dying. That night, Lena meets three women who've been working there for many months, having tried to investigate what is happening from outside the border. They explain to Lena that them three as well as Dr. Ventress are going into the shimmer soon since they can't investigate much more from the outside. Later, Lena asks Dr. Ventress why she's going into the shimmer, and Ventress explains it's because she's been watching the phenomenon for a while and has been the one who has picked the teams, having seen them go in and never come back. Lena says she wants to join them, to get answers to what happened to Kane so she maybe can save him. A day or two later, the five of them walk up to the border and enter the shimmer. Next, Lena wakes up in a tent in the forest, taking a look around. A woman called Anya asks if she remembers setting up camp, but Lena remarks she can't remember anything since they entered. A woman called Cass says none of them do, but counting from their food inventory, it looks like they've been out there for four days. Another woman called Josie remarks they have no connection to satellites, so no GPS, and the compass doesn't work either. To orient themselves and to reach the lighthouse which is their target, they'll have to use the position of the sun. Some time later, they find a house next to a swamp. Lena remarks these flowers are very strange, since there are so many different flowers, but are all growing from the same plant. Anya finds a small boat to cross the swamp with. Suddenly, Josie is grabbed by something and dragged down into the water. The team runs to rescue her, getting her out of there. They remark something big is in the water. A large creature looking like a prehistoric alligator appears, walking up towards them on land. Lena picks her gun out and shoots it to death. Next, they remark the alligator is like the flowers, seemingly being a mix of different animals and species. Lena is questioned about the strange biology inside the shimmer, and she explains all biology continued to get weirder the closer they came to the lighthouse. Lena asks Cass about why Ventress is with them, having no particular expertise that can help them, and Cass explains Dr. Ventress has lost seemingly all friends and family, having no one that will miss her or that she will miss, much like the rest of them. Cass adds she herself lost her daughter in leukemia, and in turn lost the person she herself once was, and Lena replies she's very sorry to hear that. Next, they reach what was once the headquarters of the Southern Reach before the Shimmer swallowed it. They see more signs of what Lena remarks must be extreme cases of mutations, and Ventress tells them they'll have to camp here for the night. They walk into a big room, and see signs of previous teams having camped there as well, finding a big automatic rifle. Lena sees a wall of names, and some that have been crossed out, as well as a map with guard rotas, remarking they probably should guard as well. Ventress finds a plastic bag with a note reading, for those that follow, finding a memory card in it. They plug it into a camera and see Kane cutting into another team member's stomach, seeing his organs moving. They stop watching, and all get afraid and confused. Dr. Ventress starts searching for the place where they recorded the video, and suddenly, they all find the place. They walk up to the strange phenomenon, where the body of the guy whose organs moved have mutated and grown on the wall. Josie says she doesn't want to stay there tonight, but Ventress says they have no choice. 
Lena takes some samples, after which they prepare for the night. Hours later, Lena wakes up to go and check on Ventress who is guarding. When she gets there, Dr. Ventress asks how she's doing. Lena says she wonders how her husband could have agreed on doing a suicide mission like this one, and asks Ventress if she knows, since she profiled him for the mission. But as Ventress starts explaining what she believes is the cause, a loud sound is heard in the forest. Cass is awakened by the noise and tells Josie they need to go down and help the others. Lena sees something has come through the fence, and they hear some big animal. The others arrive, and suddenly one of them is taken. They notice the animal took Cass, and hearing Cass screaming being dragged into the forest, they run to the border fence before stopping. Next morning, they say they need to go back, but Ventress says she's still going, whether they follow or not. Anya and Rosie say they need to get out, but Lena says it took a week for them through the forest, and they're two days away from the lighthouse, remarking it's probably safer to get to the coast, and then follow the coast back out. Next, they're all following Ventress towards the lighthouse, and suddenly find one of Cass's shoes. Lena remarks she could still be alive, and tells them to stay there while she follows tracks to find out. On her way, she meets two seemingly magical and beautiful creatures living harmoniously. A minute or so later, Lena finds Cass's body, and as she returns, she explains to the others that Cass is dead. They continue their hike, and that evening, they reach what was once a small village. Ventress says they should camp here tonight, since it's at least a couple hours until they reach the coast. They see strange vegetation in the form of humanoids. Suddenly Rosie gets it, explaining the shimmer is like a prism, it scrambles all types of things. She tells them, just like the sunlight, and the radio and GPS waves, and the magnetic fields, all the DNA of animals and plants are also scrambled. They all get shivers at the idea that their DNA is being scrambled too. A while later, they enter a house where they decide to camp for the night, and they secure doors and windows. Anya looks at her hand and feels fear. Later that night, Lena takes a look at her DNA and sees her cells mutating. Hours later, she wakes up with Anya knocking her out. As she wakes up again, Anya has tied them all to chairs. Anya remarks the previous teams that went out here got crazy and started to kill each other, and starts questioning how Cass actually died, since the only person who saw an animal take Cass, and then saw her dead body, was Lena. She questions if Lena has lost it and was the one who actually killed Cass. But then, Anya starts crying, saying she can see her fingers moving, and tells them she can't let them go since they might cut her open like the previous team did to that guy. Suddenly, they hear Cass's voice screaming for help. Anya starts yelling Cass' name, thinking she's alive, and runs out. But then they hear Anya making a sudden scream, and then the sound of a bear. They all get scared to death, and freeze, and suddenly the animal enters. It walks up to them, and slowly circles around them, all while the voice of Cass is heard over and over from the creature's mouth screaming, help me. As the animal is about to take a bite of Josie, Anya appears injured and starts shooting the animal. It attacks her and kills her after a short struggle, all while the others try to get loose. It turns towards Lena and starts attacking, but then Rosie picks up a gun and manages to shoot its brains out. After a short recovery, Ventress says she's continuing the hike right now since both their minds and bodies are disintegrating. Rosie and Lena stay, and as the sun rises, the two sit down outside to talk. Rosie remarks it was so strange hearing Cass's voice from that animal, and tells Lena it's like part of her mind became a part of the creature as it was killing her, saying she doesn't want to end up like that. She stands up and walks away. Lena repeats Josie's name, telling her to stop. Suddenly as she walks around a bush, she disappears. Lomax asks how she explains why only she returned, and Lena replies she thinks she's the only one who had a reason to get back, to save her husband, while the others had no one to come back to. Next, Lena has reached the coast, finding strange crystal-like trees growing around the lighthouse. She walks up to it, seeing skeletons outside, but decidedly opens the door and enters the building. Inside, she sees the hole from the meteor that struck the lighthouse, and then a human that is totally burned. She sees a camera and decides to watch its contents. The video shows how someone finds the lighthouse, seeing it's her husband Kane. The video shows some humanoid and then some strange light object. At the end, Kane is seen saying he thought he was a man, but that he's not that sure anymore, remarking his flesh moves like liquid, saying he can't bear it. Suddenly he tells someone behind the camera to please find Lena for him and a voice answers he will, after which Kane blows a phosphorus grenade. Suddenly Kane is seen walking up, and Lena distressed ends the video. Wanting answers, she then walks up to the hole, and starts climbing down. As she reaches the end, she hears Ventress's voice talking nonsense. Lena asks if she's okay, and Ventress answers something is inside her, something not like us humans, 
and she doesn't know what it wants, but that it will spread until the world is annihilated. Suddenly, some kind of energy substance starts exiting her body, transforming into a big, moving energy blob. Lena stares at it, and suddenly a drop of her blood is sucked into it. Her cells start to divide with incredible speed, and the energy blob is transformed into a humanoid. Lena gets scared, and shoots it, but it has no effect. In fear, she runs up, but meets it again upside. She moves around, and starts noticing it's imitating her movements. She runs to the door, but is blocked. In exhaustion, she falls down, which the humanoid does too. A while later, she wakes up, and the humanoid imitates her every movement. Lena slowly moves towards her husband's bag, and picks out a phosphorus grenade. As she puts the phosphorus grenade into its hands, it transforms into her. She removes the pin and quickly runs out. The extreme heat causes the humanoid to burn, and as it stumbles around, the place starts to burn. Outside, Lena suddenly sees how the strange trees start to burn, and inside, the humanoid climbs down into the hole it came from, and the whole place burns up. Lomax remarks it must have been an alien, asking if she could describe its form and if it was carbon-based. Lena answers she doesn't know. Lomax asks what it wanted, and she replies she doesn't think it wanted anything. He remarks it was destroying our environment, but Lena says it wasn't destroying, but changing. Lomax explains a team reached the lighthouse a few hours ago and found only ash, remarking if anything she encountered was once alive, it is now dead. Lena asks about her husband, and Lomax tells her that when the shimmer disappeared, his vital signs started to stabilize, and not long after, he seemed perfectly normal. Lena goes to meet him, and when she does, she remarks he can't be the real Kane. He answers he doesn't think so, but says he remembers her. He stands up, and the two hug each other, and the last thing we see are their eyes shimmering. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.